All right, everyone, let's get ready to talk about Psycho 3 right now. Bad Days Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. Greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Dual, better known to you as the Big D. This time around, I bring to you a review of the 1986 slasher sequel, Psycho 3. As Anthony, starring Anthony Perkins, once again, as Norman Bates, who also happens to be the director of this film, along with Diane Scarwood, Jeff Fay, and Roberta Maxwell. Now, it's unrelated to Robert Block's third Psycho novel, which would come out four years later, Psycho House. The film kind of got more mixed response than the last one. The film was kind of a commercial disappointment, though. Now, the film takes place a month after the events of the last one, where, of course, Norman is... Still running the Bates Motel with the corpse of Emma Spool still sitting up in the house. Now, of course, if you recall what happened in the end of the last one, we kind of get a flashback before our intro. And a suicidal nun with whom Norman falls in love with comes to the motel along with a drifter named Dwayne. Dwayne Duke. And the reporter also tries to solve the mysterious disappearance of Ms. Spool as someone begins another murder spree. Yeah. Now also, the film has an, ele an original electronic music score, that composed and performed by Carter Burwell, one of his earliest projects. I'm not quite familiar with him. But let me see. Okay, now, he's, he's composed music for several... Types of movies, most notably the Coen Brothers flicks like Fargo, The Big Lebowski, No Country for Old Men, and let's see, hmm, give me a sec, I'm just trying to see, yeah, he's, He's composed lots of movies. There's too many to mention, though. So, let's see. Okay, he's also done um, the scores for Being John Malkovich, Adaptation, Where the Wild Things Are. Heck, even Raising Arizona. Very impressive. I must say, like I said, there are lots of them. Too many to mention, unfortunately. All right, now let's get into our story of Psycho 3. Well, it starts in 1982. Norman Bates is working at the old Bates Motel and lives with the preserved corpse of Emma Spool, a waitress who told him she was his real mother. When Spool remains missing after a month, Norman's ex-boss, Ralph Stadler, and local law enforcement grow concerned. Dwayne Duke, a sleazy musician desperate for money, is offered the job of assistant manager at the motel. And Tracy Venable, a journalist from Los Angeles, is working on an article about serial killers being released from custody. Believing that Norman is killing again, Tracy appears at the diner where he works and attempts to talk with him. Norman opens up to her, excuse me, but is distracted when Maureen Cole, a young, mentally unstable former nun, enters. And, and she resembles his, Norman's former victim, Marion Crane, seeing the initials MC on her suitcase. And Norman panics and leaves the diner. Now, Maureen's got into trouble after, um, well, a, well, a nun accidentally falls to, to suicide in the beginning. Yeah. Really shocking. And thus she leaves the, cov 
the convict. Anyway, now, uh, later on, Mother enters Maureen's bathroom that night, intending to kill her, only to find that she has cut her wrist. The shock of this causes Norman to reassert his personality while delirious Marie mistakes Mother holding a knife for the Virgin Mary holding a crucifix. Norman brings Maureen to a hospital and offers that she stay as long as she needs to. After she is released, they begin a romantic relationship. That night, Dwayne picks up a girl named Red at a bar. But after Red makes it clear that she wants more than a fling, Dwayne rejects her. Yeah. Yeah, this kinda has some more hot footage than what we could what we'd see in the in the last movie. Yeah. While she's while Red's trying to call a cab, mother shares the phone booth door and stabs her to death. Um if I'm not mistaken. Nah, uh, I'm I'm thinking wrong. Thought it was probably so I remember. So my my apologies. And okay, now where was I? The following day, tourists arrive at the motel, planning to watch a football game. And Tracy searches Spool's apartment. Meanwhile, discovering the motel's phone number ran on magazine cover repeatedly. Now, later on, Patsy Boyle, the motel's only sober guest, um, enters um, Norman's office and goes into the parlor where she goes to the, has to go to the, the John and what have you. And then soon she is murdered by mother while on the can. Yep. Soon Norman finds her body and reacts just like how he saw Marion in the first movie. And soon buries her in the motel's ice chest. The next morning, Sheriff Hunt and Deputy Leo appear to investigate Patsy's disappearance. Tracy soon shows up and tells Maureen about Norman's past, causing her to stay with Father Brian, who took care of her at the hospital. Norman finds that Spool's corpse is missing and finds a note saying that she is in cabin 12. Dwayne extorts Norman, threatening to turn him in into the into the police for murder unless he is given a large sum of money. In an ensuing fight, Norman beats Dwayne with his guitar until he loses consciousness. Norman drives his car to the swamp with Dwayne and Patsy's bodies inside. Dwayne regains consciousness and attacks Norman, who accidentally drives into the swamp. Norman escapes the car while Dwayne drowns. Tracy talks to Stadler about Spool and discovers she is wor she was working at the diner before Stadler purchased it from Harvey Leach. Tracy meets with Leach, a resident at an assisted living facility, and is informed that Spool was also institutionalized for murder. Maureen convinces herself that Norman is her true love and returns to the motel. Now, I'm gonna get to the ending of this movie. You got five seconds to fast forward and advance. Well, and you know the you know the routine. Avoid any spoilers. So go to the description box. Fast forward to the time below to avoid any spoilers. That's what I'm really trying to say. So if you are prepared now, here we go. Okay, you've been warned. Anyway, Marine returns to the motel, and she and Norman share a tender moment at the top of the staircase in the Bates house. When Mother shouts furiously at Norman, startling him, he loses his grip on Marine's hands, causing her to fall down the stairs, a la Arbogast kill. Eventually kills, eventually gets killed by a little piercing arrow by one of the statues, which, uh, uh, not a good death. Not even, believe me. 
you know everybody, a lot of people don't like Darby Gas Kill. I think I recall Derek from Derek's Horror Corner mentioning that he didn't like um, Marine's death either, unfortunately. I'm pretty sure. I'll, I may have been wrong. Sorry. If I was wrong, Derek, I apologize. Uh, now, where was I? Enraged, Norman promised his mother that he will get her for this. Tracy enters the house and finds Maureen dead, then sees Norman dressed as mother, bearing a knife, but is unable to flee. Tracy tries reasoning with Norman by explaining his family history. Emma Spool was his aunt and was in love with Norman's father, but he married her sister, Norma. Spool killed Norman's father and kidnapped Norman when he was a child, believing he was the child she should have had with him. When she was caught, Norman was returned to Norma while Spool was institutionalized. Tracy discovers Spool's corpse in the bedroom. Norman takes off his dress. Mother orders him to kill Tracy, but when Norman raises the knife, he attacks Mother instead, dismembering Spool's corpse. And Sheriff Hunt takes Norman to his squad car. Hunt informs Norman that they may never release him from the institution again. To which Norman replies, But I'll be free. I'll finally be free. In the back of the squad car, Norman caresses the severed hand of Emma's bull and gives us the, the face. Just like he did in the end of the first movie. And then fades out. And that's the end. So what did I think of Psycho 3? I'm going to say it's good in some ways. I think it's close to okay good to good good. But it's not good great and what have you. You know what I'm saying. I think it's a mixed bag and what have you. Anthony Perkins once again nails it as Norman. His direction was pretty good. Uh, let's see. And Carter Barwell's score for this was real good. I did like that. But anyway... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will say that uh, Diana Scarwood as Maureen was okay and all. Jeff Fay as Dwayne was pretty good. I did like the character. Roberta Maxwell played Tracy. Not bad. Hugh Gillen as Sheriff Hunt. Not bad. Not too bad. I'm sorry. It's just been a year since I last saw this movie. I would like to revisit the Psycho franchise again one day. But some of the cast was more hit than miss. But that's just in my words. I may be wrong, though. But anyway. Now, the question is, would I recommend Psycho 3? Well, let me just say it to you nicely. I'd say, sure, go ahead. Unless... But if you're not too thrilled with the third one, then don't bother. I'd say, unless you're a die-hard Psycho fan and you want to be a completionist, go for it. So anyway, now what did you think of Psycho 3? Please feel free to tell me in the comment section below. If you liked the video, click the like button below. Subscribe to my channel as well. And be a part of the Big D Nation. Join me again next time when I conclude my Psycho reviews with Psycho 4, The Beginning. Now remember, I'm not reviewing the 1998 remake. Mm -mm. Staying away from it. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. And if you like this, check out my reviews of these of the other two Psycho movies. In the upper left-hand corner is my review of the original from 1960. The upper right-hand corner is my review of Psycho 2. And as a... And if you want some more good kills and what have you with some suspense, go to, from the 80s, go to the bomb left-hand corner for my review of the original Halloween 2 from 1981. And the bomb right-hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe for more. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, video games, 
and all that stuff, I'm your guy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying see ya.